Yeah, again, one of the many skills of a good English teacher, you've got to be able to not only uh, analyze uh, a sentence, you not only do you have to pass a sentence and work out, you know, all the different elements of it, you know, which what kind of what clause is this and what type of clause is it and what's the subject and what's the object and you know which which you know which part of this is is part of a verb which parts are part of a noun phrase um you know what's an adjective what's acting as an adjective what which part of this is an adverb and which verb does it modify not only do you have to do that you've got to be able to package it and explain it, deliver it to uh, someone who's even more confused than you, <laughs> and who's who doesn't even speak that language. So yeah, again, it's a, a very complicated skill set um, of being able to do those things. Uh, but yeah, part you, you certainly got to yeah, you've got to know the grammar. You've got to, of, of course. I mean, unless you, you know, unless you're a very very skillful salesperson. And you've got your method, which is like you don't need to. You don't need to study grammar. You don't need to do da 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 da. da. And sometimes I wonder of those teachers if they're like, "Are you doing that for the students' benefit, or is that for your benefit?" Because you, <laughs> you don't like teaching grammar. Probably both. <laughs> Probably both. I've seen. I've seen. Yeah, I've seen those situations. Um, but yeah, you're right. There are some teachers who who have a different important skill, charisma, and. Charisma can be really motivating to students to just like fill someone with motivation, mm -hmm. and, like energy, positive energy just flows out of them. You know, I've got yeah. one guy like that who like, he's just super successful. He set up his own school. I like helped him do the marketing and stuff. And, um, <laughs> then we started talking about English and I was just like, what? He didn't like, know. He didn't have any actual grammar to him. And, and he he's he still has hundreds and hundreds of students like multiple teachers working for him and he's uh it's all charisma like most char charismatic guy i've ever met <laughs> well you know if it works it works i suppose i mean does do, do his do his learners achieve what they want to achieve i i imagine so they stay i mean who knows yeah <laughs> you know, <laughs> like uh yeah, I, I don't know. I've I've got no, almost no set, completely set ideas about this stuff. Um, to an extent, I kind of think, yeah, well, fine. I'm sure there are, there are tons of people who actually improve English to a really good level, a really functional level, without really getting bogged down in in grammar and yeah. learning grammar. And in fact, you know, those people who say you can learn English without studying grammar, you know, to an extent, they're right uh, because. Uh, if you focus on grammar too much, again, if you think that that's what it's all about, and you just spend your time with your head buried deep in in a grammar book, uh, then you might end up being unable to actually have a conversation with someone because you'll be so badly blocked by by those thoughts of oh, is this correct and what's the what uh, 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 you know what is the past perfect continuous it's a started in the past but it's a, related to a previous action of a part oh god you know <laughs> yeah grammar can really kind of uh block uh, people you know again another another uh, essential tool of the good language teacher is being able to teach grammar but without it being an encumbrance to, to them in the future you know about teaching people grammar but breaking grammar down like do, sort of killing the grammar beast yes you know instead because you can teach people grammar but you, it you can do it in a way that actually makes it kind of worse <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know I, i'm sure i struggle with that too i mean like, i live in france and in the classroom most of my learners are french these days mm -hmm. and, uh, like in a lot of languages they don't have present perfect um, present perfect continuous either, and so I've meant I've 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 done many lessons where I've tried my best to break it down and explain and help them learn present perfect. And at the end of the lesson, I've felt like no, I think maybe I might have just traumatized them <laughs> a little bit more than help them. You know, I could, at the end, I felt like some of them. The conclusion was like, uh, I'm never going to use present perfect then. <laughs> I, I just sort of like 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's very yeah, hard. yeah. Present perfect is a gift to English teachers. You can just like yeah, it's yeah. like it's like tooth, it's like sugar for dentists. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Tooth decay for for the dental industry is present perfect for the English language teachers. Yeah. You can always rely on that to The Russian students always had problems with that too. Yeah, I mean god, I mean I know it's not surprised really. It's a bloody nightmare, isn't it when you think about it? <laughs> it's like an action that start in the fast past and continues in the present except for ones that are finished but have some effect on the present. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then a lot of the popular uh, book series t start teaching this, you know, at like what level? <laughs> yeah, low, pretty low level. Or even they gotta introduce it in little bits. Because if you dump the whole thing, the whole nightmare onto them all at once, they're like, you know, like going through B, A, A1, A2, B1. It's like, you know, learning English is all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's going well. And then B2 suddenly, right, here we go. Yeah. Present perfect, present perfect, simple, present perfect, continuous. All the different time expressions, all the different possible possible ways it's used. Um, and now that you have present perfect, let's do conditionals. Yeah, okay. Let's throw that in there too. Yeah. Yeah. So no, they have to pass on it. They have to sort of like uh, give it to the students in little bits, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I had one guy explain it. The most interesting way I heard someone try to make sense of it was this Russian guy who had studied like old German and he mm. uh said that there was this tense called the pluperfect and that that a lot of older languages had it and like older slavonic had it and and so like if you explained it like this then and i'm like crap nobody in their first language knows their first language well, it's like really in order to learn present perfect we need to take a journey back into time yeah. you know you actually have to like um decode someone's dna and stick the present perfect in you know? <laughs> <laughs> invent yeah. a time machine and like you know somehow in teach their ancestors present perfect and then <laughs> you know then they stand a chance of actually learning how, how to use it i'm yeah. joking of course like plenty of people get it at some point but it's a bit of a kind of strange concept isn't it to, yeah. to introduce to our learners yeah for the low level people i always introduce the i compare it to like your time traveling because you've got past you've got present and you've got this connection uh at least for present perfect and then um, basically, then when we extrapolate that out to the others, the other perfect aspect verbs, then we can basically see the same thing. It's just, you know, point A, point B, point A, point B, point mm -hmm. so where A, future, present, or past. And so, like, then, uh, you know, we would gradually explain that out for higher level people. But, uh, but like, this concept of, like, your time travel, you're talking about two times at the same time. Some people, some that helps some people visualize it. No, yeah, it takes a long time, you know, it's sort of uh, a bit of a nebulous concept which grows slowly clearer over time, but it can take ages, which yeah. is fine, you know, it's fine. It, no one has to, you don't have to get it all in one go and then instantly start using it perfectly. You've got, you know. Even though it's called perfect. Yeah, yeah no one knows why. And well, someone must know why it's called perfect, present perfect, because it's not perfect at all. It's <laughs> imperfect. But then there's there's also imperfect tenses, aren't there? In some languages, yeah, it's all it's all very well, strange. continuous. Is kind of like that, right? Like the imperfect form, pluperfect, yeah.